Good afternoon. Good afternoon from Dava Oriental. Hi, Mom. Just on the
Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar series on co-creating solutions for better education outcomes or CREATE brought to you by the Development Academy of the Philippines. I am Yami from the DAP Center for Governance and I will be your, your moderator for this webinar series. This webinar series aims to showcase applications of innovation tools for co-creating solutions to improve delivery of basic education services and to benchmark on collaborative and innovative concepts developed for academic institutions and organizations. Before we formally start, allow me first to reiterate some reminders and house rules during this webinar series. All sessions are being recorded for documentation purposes and broadcast live at the DPCFU Oma YouTube. By joining this webinar, you automatically consent to such recording. For attendance purposes of our participants, both here at the Google Meet and at our YouTube channel, kindly type in your name and ABC at the chat box. Please put your microphone on mute to minimize background noises and to avoid disrupting the session. For questions during the session, it will be relayed using the chat box. Kindly type in your complete name and agency along with your question. Your question shall be responded to during the open forum. And for our participants at the Google Meet, you may request to state your question directly to our speakers. If you are called, you may unmute yourself and open the camera for the interaction. Okay, just a moment. Just a moment. Lastly, presentation materials of this session can be accessed at the Google Drive link flashed in your screen. Our chat monitors will also post this link in the chat box. If you will experience difficulty in reading the presented material, you can download it now. Some emails, however, may require special permission on our part to access the files. We would like to thank our participants who have joined us in the webinar series on leading education in the age of disruption and that on strategic management, innovation, and leadership education, and who are again watching and learning with us in today's online event. Today's session is entitled Innovation Thinking in Classroom Instruction, Incorporating Innovation in Curriculum. When we were subjected to quarantine or lockdown measures to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus, we were faced with a great uncertainty on how we shall continue in our daily activities. From here forth, down the last part of March 2020, we awaited guidelines from the government on how the school year will end, how the students will obtain their final grades, and if there will be graduation rights for our completers. Similarly, when, we the, when the succeeding school year was expected to start in June, the big question emerged on how education will continue. This afternoon, we take a look at an innovation in education, which promotes independent learning among students to improve their academic performance, especially in the fields of science, technology engineering, and mathematics, or STEM. We are privileged to have two presenters for today, Dr. Christopher and Dr. Maria Victoria Bernido. This power couple finished their bachelor's degrees in physics at the University of the Philippines de Liman and their master of science and doctorate degrees in the area of theoretical physics at the State University of New York at Albany. Over the years, they have had major contributions in the field of science as well as to the academe. Dr. Christopher Bernido is presently the president of the Central Visayan Institute Foundation, or CBIF, while Dr. Maria Victoria Bernido is the school directress. In 1999, they had moved from Quezon City to Hagna Bohol to take over a school previously owned by Dr. Christopher's mother, which is now the CBIF. However, more than the personal obligation, their move was equally a response to the country as they had since realized that young Filipinos 
should be more prepared for the 21st century. Together, they developed a revolutionary way of teaching physics, mathematics, and other subjects called the Dynamic Learning Program, which bagged them the Ramon Magsaysay Award in 2010. Before we proceed to their presentation for this webinar, we invite you to watch Dr. Christopher and Dr. Maria Victoria Bernita's video presentation on education in times of COVID-19, turning a disadvantage into an advantage. This was this presentation was held at or was presented at the Alexander on Humboldt Foundation virtual coffee break last September 2020. May we remind our participants that while you're watching this video, you may post your questions at the chat box so that we can uh, raise them to our resource speakers during the open forum. So may I request Ivan now to please play the video. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Chris and this is Victoria. The topic for our, our virtual coffee break is on education and we're going to talk about um, the perceived disadvantages and how it can be turned into an advantage uh, during a pandemic like uh, COVID-19. So perhaps uh, Victoria here will discuss first the uh, apparent disadvantages of a pandemic. Hello. So um, I'll, I'll talk about the perceived disadvantages because of the pandemic where in different countries there's this shelter in place or no face-to-face -face interaction between teachers and students. So we could talk about people thinking that no classroom lectures would hinder student learning. There's also the perception that onla online learning makes it difficult to track inattentive and unengaged students, meaning they might be doing something else, even if the teacher has the impression that the students are working at their computers. And then, of course, the question is, would superior learning outcomes not be possible with no internet connectivity? And this holds true for many countries where there is no widespread internet connectivity for their people. And there's also the perceived disadvantage that parents would be forced to guide their children in their lessons. And this becomes especially problematic when you have advanced topics uh, to be taken up by their children. Now, the disadvantage of no face-to-face -face interaction can be turned into an advantage if we use process-induced learning in contrast to teacher-induced learning. So it is our thesis that the disadvantages would, can be turned into an advantage by working on independent learning. Because if you have a good program, this would effectively transform students into independent learners, which would be good for the fourth industrial revolution. Then we could also accommodate new results from neuroscience to improve learning. We could also bypass the worldwide lack of mature science, technology, engineering, and math teachers, as well as bypass the lack of internet connectivity in many households in different countries in the world. And of course, we could also have a program which could enable nations with limited educational budgets to catch up with performance levels of the richer nations. Now, we think that this can all be done through what we call as the CVIF. CVIF is for the Central Design Institute Foundation, the name of our school and the dynamic learning program, which we call the DLP. So Chris will be the one to talk about the DLP. Yes, so the dynamic learning program or DLP for short, was well, started in 2002 and it's a systems approach to process induced learning in contrast to teacher induced learning. And the program incorporates 21st century skills like critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, communication, which are very important uh, skills for the next generation. And this program uh, for the past 18 years has been applied at the elementary, high school, and 
college levels. So what is this program all about? The CVIF DLP, DLP for Dynamic Learning Program, targets learner disposition. And it targets learner disposition with four uh, crucial components. One is the parallel learning homes, and this is more or less automatic in, during a pandemic. And it automatically limits teacher intervention to zero to 20%. The next component is the activity-based learning by doing, where the students will be do a lot, doing a lot of writing and they will be using an LAS. LAS is for learning activity sheet. And there's no introductory lecture when they do that. The third component is an in-house comprehensive portfolio where they file everything. And the, the, the fourth one is strategic rest. That means there's nothing beyond the LAS. So let's start with the first component, which is the parallel learning homes. So you can imagine uh, having an LAS for each student, and they will be working on this independently without teacher intervention. And there's no need for parents to tutor them. That's the de very design of the learning activity sheets or the LAS. Then once a week, they will be collected so that the subject teacher will be able to assess them and evaluate them. And every week they will receive a new batch of learning activity sheets. Now, what is this learning activity sheet? What's the, the basic design? Well, it's quite simple. It starts for any topic from grade seven to 12 or even college. It starts with a short concept digest followed by an example and then an illustration. And then it ends with two or three questions which would tie up the, the, the topic. And there will be a series of these LAS or learning activity sheets. And this step-by-step -step series will lead to an elaborate, more elaborate concept. So this series of LAS is based on the fact that any complex task can be divided into simpler steps. It could be divided into 10 steps, and even a single step could be farther subdivided so that it, even the challenged learners would be able to accomplish it. Maybe uh, let's have an example of what an LAS looks like. Let's, let's um, choose um, calculus, for example, which is given to our grade 11 class. So our example of a learning activity, this, this would actually fit into one long page, but uh, for our purposes, we, it will be split into two pages in, uh, in the PowerPoint. So the activity title would be the geometric interpretation of the integral. This is about uh, integral calculus. And the learning target is to, to interpret an integral as the limit of a sum of areas. We won't go through in detail uh, in this particular learning activity, but just the basic fundamental concept. So for example, we have three examples actually. The first example is if you're asked what would be the area of this polygon, this six-sided polygon? Well, one strategy, one way is to cover the whole polygon by six triangles. Everybody knows how to get the area of a triangle. So in this case, just get the area of, of one triangle, multiply by six, and then you will have the, the area of the polygon. Our second example is uh, a bit more complicated. Suppose we're being asked how to get the area of the shade, uh, sh uh, blue shaded area under the red arrow. Again, we can make use of familiar geometrical objects to calculate the area of the under the red arrow. And we could cover this area by a triangle and a rectangle. So just by calculating the area of the triangle and the area of this rectangle, then we can already obtain the area under this red arrow. And the third example where really calculus would, would, would come in is the following. Suppose you're being asked, what would be the area under the red curve uh, bounded by these uh, segments from A to B? Again, we use the same trick. We use this, um, familiar geometrical objects. And we can cover this area by, let's start with three rectangles, with each rectangle has uh, the height M1, this rectangle would be M2 and then M3, and the width would be delta X1, delta X2, and delta X3. So 
the area of this one rectangle is just the height times the width or its uh, um, height times the width and then for the second triangle rectangle i mean and then for the third rectangle then you can get the area more or less an approximation of the area under the red curve and it can be denoted by the summation which later on will become a an integral symbol and then we end with the question how can we improve our approximation for the area under the curve of course for those who know calculus the the idea really is to increase the number of rectangles from 100 to 1000 or even infinite number of rectangles then you will have a better approximation of the area under the red curve and that's essentially the fundamental concept in integral calculus so this is an example of a uh, of a uh, LAS of a learning activity sheet yes please maybe I would just like to emphasize that the students in the CBIF dynamic learning program the students accomplish this learning activity without any introductory lecture so it should be a one page activity they simply go through the instructions and read and try to answer the question and then there will be a next activity that they will do so um again there will be activities before this one and after this one um and they will be uh, eased up into a more complex uh, uh idea so in the cbif dlp we often say that an ideal learning activity is an activity where zero or no teacher intervention is necessary that's why it's immune to lockdowns because uh, lockdown simply mean, means that the teacher cannot lecture. And it's a rule in the DLP that an intro introductory lecture, uh, there should be no um, prior lectures so that the students will read it. They will develop critical thinking, comprehension, and problem solving activities, uh, abilities um, crucial for the 21st century. Now, and a very important component of the CVIF DLP is to copy by hand all the learning activities. And this is making use of some of the uh, neuroscientific results, and there are quite, quite a number. For example, I, we will only mention one here, a paper which appeared in Psychological Science by Mueller and Oppenheimer. They said that note taking with a pen rather than a laptop gives students a better grasp of the subject and this study was done for 300 students at Princeton and the University of California Los Angeles and in this paper Miller and Oppenheimer demonstrated that students who write out their notes on paper actually learn more in each study those who wrote out their notes by hand had a stronger conceptual understanding and were more successful in applying and integrating the material than those who took, took notes with their laptops. So this note taking, this copying by hand is naturally incorporated in the CVIF DLP. Another study earlier, much earlier, is that uh, writing the activities, it activates, activates both the psychomotor and visual faculties of the brain. And Professor Hebb long time ago said that neurons that fire together are wired together and neurons that fire out of sync lose their link. And all the activities that were that are done by the students are compiled in a comprehensive uh, student portfolio. This can be color coded like uh, yellow for science, white for math, blue for English, and so on and so forth. And it teaches them the skill of organization, which is also important for the uh, next generation in this fourth industrial revolution. Now, this whole uh, combination of LAS, writing LAS, and minimal teacher intervention can be scaled up. So for example, in 2008, we, the Philippines lacked a physics teacher, so we had a project learning physics as one nation, and it's just a combination of 239 LAS and together with 20 um, DVD lectures, which are closely tied with the LAS, and so we conducted this and the, the result was quite successful. Now, another performance indicator in our school was well, is the following. We have yearly uh, a national exam called NS, uh, NSAT or NCAE. And 2001 was before the implementation of the CVIF DLP. 
And if the vertical line would be the number of students, the horizontal would be the scores, the highest score on the right. Before DLP, majority of our students were performing really badly in a sense. And then we implemented the CVIF DLP in 2002. And by 2006, we had something like this. It's almost like a splitting of the bright ones and the challenged learners. But then when you look at 2009, the figure in 2009 is almost like the reverse of uh, 2001. So more students were learning. And by 2010, we were happy because uh, this graph was truncated. Uh, nobody scored uh, below below average. Even if our students, we have a very liberal admission of students, we accept almost everybody. So um, this is another performance indicator for the CBIF DLP. Another performance indicator would be our alumni, how they perform after they leave our school. So Ronald Duran, for example, is enrolled in at Etihad Zurich in marine science, which is actually number one in the world. Another student is Madeline Naiga. She's doing her PhD in physics uh, in a joint program uh, between Max Planck Institute and the University of Dresden. And another one of our uh, alumni is Jesha Kasanias, who got her BS Anthropology degree from University of California, Berkeley. There are others, but at least we could mention this, this three. So uh, maybe Victoria can yeah. talk about this. I, I would also like to add that our school is almost like a mission school. In the Philippines, we have both public or state schools and uh, which offer free education, elementary and secondary education. And we have private schools. Our school is a small private school, but it's a mission school. So we serve students who come, many of whom come from economically disadvantaged uh, families. So now during the pandemic, during the pandemic, when we have different conditions, how do we distribute the learning activity sheets? And obviously, for those with internet connectivity, submission and collection will be online. However, in our school, we our place is in Hagna Bohol. It's an island in the southern part of the Philippines. And less than 30% of our junior high school students have access to the internet. So what we do is we have designated drop off stations for our learning activity sheets where we also collect whatever they accomplish. So this would be in town centers, in village halls, where there is good air movement so that we don't have enclosed areas. And it would be the parents who would be collecting and uh, submitting the activities of their children. It is not really the students during the quarantine conditions. And uh, we also would like to emphasize that students can actually communicate with their friends, with their classmates by phone, by internet, or uh, yes, by, by telephone also, because we do would like to foster the development of collaboration, communication to achieve well-defined goals and not just social chatting or whatever. And uh, we have always been asked during a pandemic, what is the guarantee that each student is learning? And of course, we cannot say that it's a 100% guarantee, but we do know that because they copy and answer the learning activity sheet questions and exercises in their own handwriting, thus this activity would involve the psychomotor, visual, and when read aloud, the hearing faculties of the brain, so in this whole uh, holistic approach, then we have some guarantee that the students will be learning something. And remember that these learning activity sheets will be submitted weekly and therefore assessed by the students or, or monitored by the teachers uh, weekly. And also with the CVIF DLPS distance learning, how are learning outcomes assessed aside from tests? Then, of course, the assessment will be through the weekly learning activity sheets that are submitted, accomplished, and submitted by the students. The tests will also be modified in a way to accommodate the different quarantine conditions in the small towns and villages from where our students come. And so in the pandemic scenario, in the CVIF DLP, 
the key element, the key ingredient would really be the learning activity sheets for which typical of our DLP, our dynamic learning program, there is no introductory lecture. There is zero to minimal teacher intervention and parent tutoring is not necessary and there is weekly assessment. This is compared to the conventional method. There are, of course, thousands of modules out there and video lectures, but uh, normally, or at least commonly, these modules would still require a heavy or intensive teacher intervention and discussion. And this can be done, of course, online, but in countries like ours, where only a small percentage would have access to internet connectivity, this becomes less viable. And so the, uh, just to summarize again the key points, the CVIF Dynamic Learning Program addresses learner disposition. So this is done through habit forming daily protocols where students are engaged and it addresses the absence of teachers or limited teacher intervention because learning activities are done independently by the students 80 to 100 percent of the time and therefore this bypasses limited face-to-face -face learning and expensive internet connectivity and so we have the outstanding questions during a pandemic and our answers with the cvif dlp can students learn well when there is a shelter in place advisory to slow down the spread of infection and our answer is yes can superior learning outcomes still be achieved in different subjects, including math and science, even with no internet connectivity? And we say yes. Is it necessary for parents to guide their children in their lessons? How about for advanced topics? And we say no. The parent intervention or tutoring is not necessary because the students will have to be doing independent work so far as possible and the assessment by the teachers will be done weekly. All the students have to do is if they really have serious questions, they can write to the teachers on the activity sheets. Can we bypass the worldwide lack of mature and qualified STEM teachers in basic education? And we say yes. Are we taking advantage of new results from neuroscience to improve education? Yes. An example of this would be the writing by hand feature. No matter if students complain that it's tiring and it's backward, we say no. We have results to validate the, uh, the effectivity of that feature. And finally, is there a low cost educational program that would allow poorer nations to catch up with budget intensive educational systems of richer nations? And we say yes. And for the for the final slide, I would yes. ask. Um, before we end, we'd like to thank uh, the Science Score, our new partners, because they have been helping us develop these learning activity sheets. Uh, for example, we can start with Benjamin Rubin, who is now a, a postdoc at the University of California, Berkeley. The same with uh, Dr. Hyunjin Shim, also a postdoc at the uh, University of Berkeley, and Dr. Victor Soho who did his postdoc at the Ludwig Maximilian Universität in Munich, and um, Dr. Hyun Dog Shin, who finished his PhD uh, at MIT in the USA. And for further information, we have the following websites, and we also have, want to thank the Smart Communications, who have been with us in this travel for many, many years. Thank you very much. All right, thank you uh, to the Bernidas for sharing this web, uh, video presentation with us for the purposes of this webinar session. At this point, we bring you now the video presentation of the Bernidas for this session on innovation thinking in classroom instruction, further discussing on the dynamic learning program of the CBIF. Again, we encourage our participants to continue to post their questions or comments at the chat box to be taken up during our open forum. So please play the next video. Good day, everyone. First of all, we'd like to thank the Development Academy of the Philippines for their kind invitation to, for us to share with you some of our experiences in education and how optimized learning can be achieved even with limited teacher intervention through the CVIF Dynamic Learning Program, or DLP. But 
uh, I think we could start by looking at where we are right now. And these are some of the performance indicators. Where we are right now can be seen by these international assessment examinations. Like for example, in 1996, there was a, a TIMS trends in international math and science studies. There were 42 nations which uh, participated in that international exam and we were number 39 uh, very near the bottom and there was a team's repeat in 2000 we were number 36 out of 38 participating countries in 2003 we were number 42 out of 45 so we have been a consistent cellar dweller and for decades past and in 2018 we participated in the PISA or Program for International Student Assessment. And we were second from the last in math and science, number 78 out of 79 countries, and the last in reading. And so this has been going on for decades, almost a quarter of a century, in spite of the many reforms, educational reforms that we have experienced and the billions of pesos or dollars in budget and loans to improve our education. So that's where we are now. And so uh, there are several factors, and maybe we could start with uh, one factor as follows. Marivik could. Yeah, we have been trying to think about solutions to this prog uh, problem. And uh, for example, if we have a poor educational program, a poor curriculum, even if we pour in a lot of uh, money, funds, big budgets, we would still waste a lot of human potential in our country. We could have a good curriculum, but if we have a poor educational program or platform for the curriculum, no matter how much funds we pour into uh, our programs, we might have pockets of good learner development, but still we would have overall a, a poor outcomes. We would have poor outcomes. Now, we could have a good educational program, but if we have a poor curriculum, no matter how much funds we put, put in again, more expense, we might have selective ability-based learner development. However, if we have a good educational program, we have a good curriculum, we have low uh, budget allocations because of minimal expense, then we could still have abundant, high-powered, well-trained um, learners in our country. And this is what we aim for. And that is why we have thought of a learning program this we did in 2002 we called it the cvif dynamic learning program so that at minimal expense we could have a good curriculum and a good educational program so chris can talk about the dynamic learning program so the cvif dynamic learning program or dl cvif dlp for short which started in 2002 it's actually a systems approach to process-induced learning in contrast to teacher-induced learning. It incorporates 21st century skills like critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and communication. And this uh, program has been applied at the elementary, high school, and college levels. And what have been so far some of the performance indicators? When this was applied in, in uh, in the DepEd division of Bohol, involving 162 public high schools. It was applied in 2011, and for the first three years, the national achievement test really rose. And aside from the NAT results, we have the failure rate, which also which went down, actually. So what needs to go up, it went up. What needs to go down, like the failure rate, went down. So this was in the DepEd division of Bohol. Another division, is actually in Basilan, where there were 19 secondary schools which applied the CBIF DLP. And 
it was also applied in, in 2011 and very quickly there was a rise in their national achievement test and so this has been observed for uh, several DepEd divisions in fact and in our school um, there have been since the in the start of the senior high school there have been three batches which took the UP college admission test and last year we had 27 students who passed the UPCAT and the year before that there were also 27 students and the first batch who took the UPCAT after the senior high there were 25 passers uh, from our school and note that our school the CVIF is actually in a third class municipality 63 kilometers from the nearest city and our annual tuition fee uh, in those times was just 10,500 a year for junior high and 13,000 for senior high and our admission is very liberal but by the time they're ready uh, to take the upcut the performance is quite well not a science high school I would just like to add. yeah it's not a science high school now uh, given those good performance indicators, whether in a DepEd division or in our school or in other, a lot of private schools, how can the CVIF, uh, what can the CVIF DLP do during a pandemic? In fact, during a pandemic, the CVIF DLP uh, transitions very nicely because the program bypasses the lack of internet connectivity in households, which is a big problem even in advanced countries. And the CVIF DLP effectively transforms students into independent learners, which is very crucial, especially in this era of fourth industrial revolution. And, and this is very important for many. Parents are not forced to guide their children in their lessons uh, if they apply the CVIF DLP during the pandemic because of the very design of the learning activity sheets used in the program. We have also incorporated the new results in neuroscience to improve learning. And the program, as originally intended, could bypass the lack of STEM teachers, even worldwide, and it could enable nations with limited educational budget to catch up with the performance, uh, performance levels of richer nations. So what is this CVIF DLP all about, especially in a pandemic scenario? Scenario. There are four essential components. Uh, the first one is the parallel learning homes. This used to be the parallel learning classes or scheme in the in the ordinary situation. And then, uh, but it, we call it now as the parallel learning homes. The second component is the activity-based uh, learning by doing, which makes use of this LAS. LAS is the learning activity sheet. The third component is an in-house comprehensive portfolio. It used to be the uh, in-school in comprehensive portfolio, but now adapted to pandemic situation. And then strategic rest, which means there should be nothing beyond the LAS. Uh, in, in the normal condition, the strategic rest would be absolutely no homework throughout the, uh, the, the student's life in high school. So let's discuss this components one by one. Parallel learning homes. So you can imagine that uh, each student having a learning activity sheet would be doing the LAS with no teacher intervention and there's no need for parental tutoring. But after they have accomplished the LAS, they will have to, uh, we collect them once a week for the subject teacher to go through them and assess them. And so, what is this LAS or learning activity sheet all about? This is actually the core of, of the uh, CVIF dynamic learning program. The structure of the LAS is quite simple. One concept, one page. And it starts with a short concept digest, followed by a simple example and illustration. And the LAS ends with one, two, three questions or problems. And this LAS, one page, one concept, uh, should be in font 14 and should fit one page. And this is actually a series of LAS. So the, this follows the philosophy that any complex task can be divided into much 
smaller steps. And these smaller steps are the different LAS. So this step-by-step -step series of learning activity sheets uh, lead towards a more elaborate concept, uh, the required competency. Now, the, so this series of LAS would also take care of the curriculum problem, which we mentioned in the very beginning, because um, the DLP program is minimalist. We'll only look at the essentials and uh, um, create that into LAS. Now, so in the CVIF DLP, an ideal learning activity or LAS is an activity where zero teacher intervention is needed by design. That's why it's immune to lockdowns because in lockdowns, uh, the, the, there's no contact between uh, teacher and student, minimal contact. And so uh, it's ideal for, in fact, for pandemic situations. So an introductory lecture is not required for each LAS. And uh, that's a rule in the, in, the, in the program. And one reason for that is so that the students will read and comprehend the LAS to develop their critical thinking and problem solving abilities, which is needed for the fourth industrial revolution. A very important component of the CVIF dynamic learning pro program is the writing by hand. Each student copies the learning activity sheets starting from the activity title to the learning target all the way to the concept notes and even in the answering of the questions. There are a lot of neuroscientific studies which actually show that writing by hand uh, is superior when it comes to learning that uh, students remember better. We won't discuss the other uh, scientific studies, but uh, this is essential, an essential component in the CVIF dynamic learning program. Now, we have already discussed the three components. We started with parallel learning homes. Then we talk about the learning activities, uh, learning by doing. The third component would be the comprehensive, comprehensive student portfolio. And these portfolios are color coded. Say, for example, white for math, yellow for science, blue for English, because this uh, filing in the portfolio teaches students to be organized. And an orga organization is a, a very important skill in the, in the 21st century, in the fourth industrial revolution. A lot of successful people are actually very, very organized. And the uh, fourth component, of course, is strategic rest and uh, nothing beyond the LAS. Mm -hmm. Now, in a pandemic scenario, the distribution of the learning activity sheets, which is the heart and soul of the, the dynamic learning program, can be done online if the students are connected, they have uh, internet connectivity, or printed copies of the, the LAS can also be distributed. For example, in our school, this for this school, school year, we have 18 different drop-off points in different towns to distribute the distribute and collect the printed uh, learning activity sheets. So just for comparison, we have here in a pandemic scenario, on the left would be the CVIF DLP uh, way of, of uh, educating the students. So in the CVIF DLP, there's no introduction lecture that is uh, necessary when they go through the, the students go through the LAS. There is zero to minimal teacher intervention. And for parents, this, there's absolutely no need for parents to tutor or for, even for tutors to be to help the students because by design, the LAS are, are done step by step. And these are done, uh, uh, there's a weekly assessment of all these LAS. In Contrast in the conventional scenario, they make use of modules, and there are thousands of modules uh, in the market. But all these modules were actually designed such that they need teacher intervention, they need teacher lectures, and that's why a lot of people are encountering problems uh, during this, this pandemic. So once these LAS are distributed, we also allow the students while doing their LAS to communicate with each other through cell phones or uh, whatever gadget because it also trains them 
for this uh, other skills of collaboration and communication because collaboration and communication working in a team is also a, a valued skill in the 21st century now there are questions which we often receive uh, such as for example during a pandemic what is the guarantee that each student is learning well the guarantee is that each LAS is copied by hand and answered in the student's own handwriting. And writing involves psychomotor, visual, and when read aloud, the hearing faculties of the brain. So, um, and there are a lot of studies which show that indeed a person is learning once this is happening. Another typical question is, with the CBIF, distance learning, how are learning outcomes associated? Assessed, assessed aside from tests well actually there's an assessment every week because the LAS uh, is being checked and looked at by the expert teacher or subject teacher and the portfolio uh, in which all these LAS are, are, are filed are also can also be graded so aside from, from exam. so the CBF, as a summary the CVAF DLP addresses learning learner disposition and this is important because it is habit forming they carry it all the way to college and graduate school where there is a daily protocol they they write which uh, keeps the students engaged and the dlp also ad addresses the absence of teachers learning activities are done independently through the las 80 to 100 percent of the time that's why uh, it bypasses limited face-to-face -face learning and expensive internet connectivity during a pandemic. For more information, you can look at Thank you to uh, Dr. Christopher and Dr. Maria Victoria Bernido for uh, this video presentation. So before we go to our uh, Q&A, our open forum, we will be having a five-minute break. So we request our uh, participants to continue uh, to post their questions at the chat box for, um, so we can uh, raise them up to uh, during the open forum. All right, so we'll have a five-minute break. And I'll see you. Good evening. These are the questions. Can students learn well when there is a lockdown to slow down the spread of infection? And our answer is yes, they can learn. Maybe not 100%, but they do learn. Can superior learning outcomes still be achieved even with no internet connectivity? And we say yes, um, especially in math, which requires a lot of hands-on activities for the students. Is it necessary for parents to guide their children in their lessons? How about for advanced topics? And our answer is no. They are not required to tutor their children because the DLP would like to, uh, we would like to be able to foster independent learning. 
Can we bypass the worldwide lack of mature STEM teachers in basic education? And again, we say yes, because precisely we are doing independent learning with the DLP. Are we taking advantage of new results from neuroscience to improve education? And yes. Um, an example would be writing by hand. There are other um, components of the DLP wherein we use All right, we apologize for the uh, technical uh, difficulties right now. Um, just give us a few minutes. All right, so we'll just proceed now to our break, uh, five minute break. So uh, please, uh, we request our participants both at the Google Meet and at the YouTube to please continue to type in your questions for our resource persons. We will now have our five minute break. at least have a significant reduction of this gap between the haves and the have-nots, uh, those with internet connectivity and those without. So um, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you have uh, questions, we can 
certainly entertain them. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, thank you, and we are back. So, um, apologies for the uh, technical glitches uh, earlier. Um, the the downside of um, online webinars is that uh, we get to lose communication with our team at some point. So, we apologize for that. Okay, just a moment. So, right now, we will be proceeding to our um, our Q and A. So uh, we welcome on the platform now, um, Dr. Christopher and Dr. Maria Victoria Bernido. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, afternoon. everyone. Good afternoon. Okay, so um, we had uh, we have a few questions here from our uh, chat box. Perhaps we can start with that. Sure. So let's see. If Okay, so we have our uh, question here from Jeffrey uh, Bag Bang Bagongoy. Perhaps we can um, call Sir Jeffrey to um, address or, or to state his question directly. Sir Jeffrey. Sir Jeff. Yes, but uh, yes, please state your uh, question directly to our resource persons. Uh, my question is uh, can we encourage our students to uh, uh, lilipat sila sa distance learning uh, program since uh, it is now a trend in uh, our education system? Yes, uh, in fact, the CVIF dynamic learning program is a form of distance learning in a sense. Um, but unlike the other distance learning where they rely on internet connectivity, uh, we don't. We could bypass the lack of internet connectivity, but it's still a form of distance learning. And at the same time, we're able to assess the students, even if there's no face-to-face -face interaction between students and Okay, thank you, Pa. Thank you. So uh, maybe we have uh, Lenny Nilius also to state her question directly. Miss Lenny. Hello. Hello, Miss Lenny. All right, so perhaps I can uh, go ahead and read her question instead. So um, it says here about the LAS used in the LDP. Uh, how are these LAS different from or similar with the LAS which will be used by DepEd this second quarter of the current school year? Well, the although although they are both called LAS, my impression is that the LAS of DepEd is not limited to one concept, one page. So uh, if you look at the details, there, there's a huge difference between the two. Um, maybe. Yeah, although actually we have um, received some messages that there are some divisions of the DepEd uh, which are planning to use the LAS of our dynamic learning program. So there are LAS which are different. There are LAS or learning activity sheets which might be the same as ours. So it depends on the division of DepEd, which will be using the learning activity sheets. If you are interested in the format of our learning activity sheets, the ones that we use in our school, uh, you can check our website. It's easy to remember, cvifbohol.com. And, and there's a, um, a button there that you can click, e-learning. We upload our 
learning activity sheets for junior high school and senior high school, all subjects, uh, every week. So we, we don't give them all the learning activities for one quarter. We do it weekly, on a weekly basis, so that, because the philosophy of the DLP really is a little bit at a time, not, not too much, so that students will be given more time to absorb the learning materials. So if you would like to see the difference, you may check the learning activities either from the DepEd Commons. Uh, I think some of our learning activity sheets are also uploaded at DepEd Commons, or you could go directly to our website, cvifbohol.com. I hope that answered the question. Okay, thank you for that. Um, there's another question from Manina, I'm sorry, from Maria Victoria Veloria. Could the task sheets be best utilized as a supplementary learning material or used hand in hand with face to face mode instead of using them as an independent learning tool? Uh, the learning activity sheets that we prepare are, uh, well, they can be very flexible. It depends again on the teachers. If the teachers feel that they could do some intervention, whether face-to-face, -face, which is not yet allowed right now, but uh, there are many teachers who are doing intervention through online platforms like Zoom, like Google, or other um, commercial learning platforms, then they could use our learning activity sheets as supplementary activity sheets or supplementary learning materials, complementary or supplementary. However, by design, they are meant to be to allow students to learn the essentials or the basics such that they are able to proceed to the next higher levels required of them. So, for example, for mathematics, uh, even if the, the, there is no teacher intervention, intervention the possibility or the probability that the students will learn some minimum competencies is very high. Even with just the learning activities alone, as long as the students do the activities one by one. I mean from grade 7 to grade 8 to grade 9, 10, 11, 12, because our idea really is to have a step-by-step -step building up of the competencies of the students. But if they skip several activities, then of course, we will not anymore give the guarantee that the students will learn. And the more they skip our DLP learning activities, the more they will need teacher intervention. My, my analogy to skipping the LAS is, uh, if, you want, if you watch a movie and you enter the cinema house in the middle of the, of the showing of a movie, then uh, you'd be lost. You don't know what happened before, what happened after, and then you'd say, oh, I cannot understand the movie, uh, precisely because you did not start from the beginning of the movie. So that's my analogy with regards to not going through the step-by-step -step series of LAS. So for example, there are, I think there would be a couple of depth and divisions which might adopt our learning activity sheets for the second quarter, because we actually started in, in August. So we're a little bit ahead, and, and if DepEd, some divisions will apply or implement or use our LAS for the second quarter, then our advice is that they should at least give the students the link to the first quarter activities, especially in math and the sciences. Because again, for these subjects, the, the slow buildup of the fundamentals would be very, very important. I mean, you cannot discuss functions if you have not, if the students have not mastered integers, plotting points on a Cartesian system, positive, negative coordinates of a point, operations with numbers. So all of this are built up slowly starting from grade seven. Uh, at least in our school. We don't have elementary, by the way. We only have high school. But um, for grade seven, we do a lot of review activities with our students because we do not want to assume that they all have mastered 
the mathematics essentials from elementary school. So we don't want to assume that. We start grade seven with a lot of review for them. That's a long answer <laughs> for your question. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So may we remind our participants at the YouTube channel that you may still uh, post your questions at the chat box. For our uh, next question, may we have uh, Ms. Manina Antipina to state her question directly. Ma'am, you may unmute yourself. Ms. Manina? Okay, well, I'll just go ahead and I'll read her question instead. So, um, I'm sorry, this is for, um, from Alma Bilarmina, I'm sorry. Alma Bilarmina, may we have your question, please? All right, so um, her question was, our problem isn't so much about learning resources, but our, learning, our learners' inability to manage their own learning, because many of them are struggling readers. How do we innovate instruction to address this concern? In the CVIF DLP, uh, uh, let me tell you about during the normal times. We don't have an elementary, we only have a high school. And our feeder, our incoming students, pupils, come from the 15 or so public elementary schools. And our admission is very liberal. And we suspect that there are many entering our grade 7 who are non-readers. They're actually non-readers. And But you would be surprised that by the time they reach uh, grade 9, when, when they are ready to take the NCAE, in the NCAE, Nobody scores below below average. So what happened to the non-readers? Actually, the CVAF DLP is designed to address the problem of non-readers. Why? Because in the CVAF DLP, for every subject, they do a lot of writing, a lot of copying. And this act of writing actually says that they, they would realize that each symbol has a meaning. And so, uh, even if they're doing mathematics or doing uh, other subjects, they're copying the LES. And, and this is a cure for the uh, problem of non-readers. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. So, uh, for, I see that we have uh, two raised hands here. Uh, may I call Ms. Edna Tazan. Do you have a question for our resource speakers? Ms. Edna? Ms. Edna, you have a question? Wala po, ma'am. Sorry, napindot lang po. All right, so how about um, Red Swell Tawasil? Uh, you're raising your hand. Um, you have a question. All right, so let's proceed. Yes, hello. All right, so if you do have questions, please continue to uh, type in, type them at the chat box so we can read them. So let me just proceed now to the question of Mr. Prudential Rubies from DepEd Antique. Um, his question is, how do you simplify the LAS? Is there, a, is there a method or steps to consider in simplifying the LAS? Well, um Actually, everything has to be aligned from the activity title to the learning target and then concept notes and then, and then questions. That's the basic structure. Now, if you are making an LAS, 
And then your presentation or the, the introduction of that topic goes beyond one page or, or goes to the second page. It's actually a signal that you have to cut your introduction of the topic into two, two pages or, or three activities. So in many occasions, our teachers also submit uh, a learning activity sheet. And then uh, Marivik takes a look at it. She edits it. And one LAS submitted by a teacher can sometimes be divided into two or three LAS. So uh, th that's one. You have to discipline yourself that you should limit it to one page. And if it goes beyond one page, cut it and put a question uh, at the bottom of that page uh, related to the topic that you have discussed so far. It could be some definition or something like that. I, I, I can give a specific example. Uh, say in DepEd, uh, there's a competency in mathematics that they should learn uh, congruent. They should learn about congruent triangles, the congruence theorems like the SSS, side, 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 angle, side, angle, and so on. So these are congruence theorems. Now, if you have that target or competency in mind, then you can now move backward. They should be able to define what an angle is. They should recognize an angle. They should know how to measure an angle. They should know how to represent the measure of an angle whether it is 30 degrees, 35 degrees, 45 degrees. So you can imagine that the competency is at the top of the stairs and step by step you start with defining an angle, defining um, a triangle, that a triangle would be a polygon with three sides. And then they should know, uh, as I mentioned before, they, by then they should know the measure of an angle the measure of the segments forming the sides of the angle so that as they build that up, when you say now that for, say, for side, side, side theorem, all the measures of the sides would be the same, then <clears throat> they would be able to um, learn the congruence theorem. So it's step by step. How do you simplify? Always start with definitions. We realized uh, when we started, when we became involved in high school education, that much of the difficulties encountered by students in math and science, for example, could be attributed to the fact that they have not learned the vocabulary of math or science. So every technical term should be well defined and in some of our learning activity sheets, in fact, we ask them to translate. For example, uh, one teacher, I inserted a question in her activity. They are studying the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Uh, remember, for grade 8 math, there's a competency on the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. Now, they should know what the b is the y-intercept and i i uh, inserted i suggested to the teacher why don't you ask the students to explain explain in filipino or visayan the term y-intercept and she was asking me ma'am is that possible is this really an intercept and all of this by text and email uh, you, uh, because we we do distancing you know during this pandemic and I told them, yes, they can explain because when you say B is the y-intercept in Visayan, you would say kung asa mutabok sa y-axis, ba? Ida mutabok sa tubana kay dili raba ko Bisaya. But uh, kung tagalog naman kung sa tatawid ng y-axis, ano yung y-axis? Ito yung linya na yung yung vertical o yung nakatayo na linya. Ngayon, yung y-intercept, yun yung kung saan, ano yung punto na saan tatawid yung uh, graph nung line. So, there will of course be combinations of technical terms which could be in English, but it's normal. Even the French do that. Even the Germans do that. They have some terms which are technical terms, but the rest of the explanation would be in their mother language. So, that is one way of simplifying the LAS. If you can have a competency that you can split into 10 different LAS, but always start with definitions one at a time 
so that you will be able to reach the desired competency. And many times, by the way, for the congruence theorems, that would be one example where our students are able to do the activities without any teacher lecture. They're able to solve the problem. So how many activities? Several. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, there, uh, there's a follow-up question here in relation to the load of the LAS. How many LAS do you give in a day for a subject? This well, is from Professor Rubies. Yes. Yes, ma'am. It depends on the subject. Uh, whether it's math, science, and it depends on the topic at hand or the, the topic that you would like the students to take up. There will be some LAS. We'd rather that there will be, for example, in a period of one hour, if you have very free, short, introductory LAS, students may be able to finish that. But sometimes there are topics which are a little heavier. And again, I will use the example in Math 8 for the, where you, you have the equation of a line. That takes some time for a student to absorb. So a student can occupy or use one hour or two hours simply to graph an, uh, a line, a linear equation, graph it properly, label the points properly, have the equation of a line. That could take one period. So again, it depends on the subject. And it depends on the topic being discussed. So it could range for a one hour period, it can range from one to two. And if it's a one hour and a half period, it could be one to three LAS, learning activity sheets. Also in relation to that is a question by Jean uh, Lasquete, which is, which is better in terms of extent of learning, activity sheet or worksheet? Um, well, we will clarify. There are worksheets or workbooks, worksheets taken from workbooks, the workbook style. We do not recommend that. In what sense? Uh, typical or normal worksheets or wor uh, sh activities in workbooks, the students simply answer. It could be equations or if it, it would be in the languages, they simply fill in the word, fill in the blanks with, say, the simple past tense or past progressive tense. Or if it's Filipino, um, salungguhitan ang pangugnay, mga ganyan, worksheets. We do not recommend that. In our DLP, the students actually write out the entire activity from the title to the learning target to the concept digest and the exercises. So it's all, they, they, they write down all, they write down the whole equation. This, the purpose of this is we would like them to think in terms of complete sentences. Of course, there will still be some bullet type formats every now and then, maybe 20% of the time. But 80% of the time we have complete sentences whether in the languages or in mathematics because it's very very important for students to do well they should think of equations as complete sentences it's not just uh writing down the sum you should, uh, write the sum in the box and then they just write the sum it becomes very perfunctory they can do that nonchalantly without any emotional connection now our goal for the students is to connect with numbers, with equations, with graphs, for them to feel how a graph curves or goes up or goes down. But they will feel that only if they do the actual writing, the drawing, even the coordinate axis, they actually do that and do the grid and so on. So that's the difference between the worksheet style and the DLP LAS style. I in hope the, we address, yeah. In the workbook style where students just put in the answer, sometimes they just guess the answer. Uh, no feeling, you know, you just guess. But when you ask them to write the concept notes, then they will really begin to understand what is happening, what the question is all about. And it's not just simple. So even if there's not, no question yet, just the act of copying, already their minds are, are at work. Okay, thank you. And um, for the next question, I would like to call uh, Mr. Eric uh, Marmol to address his question directly. Uh, good afternoon, po. 
Uh, I would just like to ask, uh, especially on the measures that you can suggest in order for the students to avoid burnout or lessen their lessen the cognitive load uh, and and ensure that students are motivated to learn, especially in the current setup that we have right now, na distance or remote learning. Thank you very much. Actually, in the one of the core component of the dynamic learning program is this, which we have mentioned quite often, copying by hand. What happens when you copy by hand? You are slowed down, okay? Uh, unlike if there's just a lecture, bam, 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 one topic after another, even if you have not absorbed it, you go to the next topic. But when you copy the concept digest, copying slows you down. It allows you to meditate on, on the topic that is uh, uh, being studied. There was one professor from the Philippine Normal University which visited our school in Hagna. Uh, this was uh, pre-pandemic. And this uh, professor from PNU asked me, can you tell me in one sentence why the CVIF DLP works? So I, I thought about it and then in one sentence I answered that the CVIF DLP works because we give time and space for the students to absorb the lesson. So um, it, it's not the speed of the teacher, you see, but it's the speed of the student. The teacher can go 100 kilometers per hour and, he would, and she would say, oh, I have covered the topic. But then when you give the exam, everybody fails. So it, that, that's the pace of the teacher when it's uh, conventional, traditional. But here in the CVIF DLP, it's the individual pace of the student. And especially now during the pandemic, um, the students have time to meditate and look at one uh, LAS longer than usual. In the ordinary conditions during the pre-pandemic, there's the class schedule. That means 8 to 9, this subject, 9 to 10, another subject, 10 to 11, another subject. That means when the student is doing the LAS, kahit hindi patapos sa LAS, nag-ring na yung bell, another subject, a different LAS. So medyo quicker ang pace dun sa pre-pandemic times. But now, at home, with the LAS, and the students copying the LAS, they actually, if, if they're good in, in math, then they can, they can spend more time in, in English. Some students are good in English, but not in math. So now it's differentiated. The time allotted by the student for a subject is differentiated. It's not anymore a one-hour thing based on the schedule of the class. So if I'm, I'm, not, if I'm not good in math, I spend uh, three hours in my math LAS and maybe 30 minutes in English because uh, I'm, I'm good in English. So it's differentiated. This could avoid the burnout. Yeah. Um, but thank you for raising that question. That's actually a very, very important question or issue that is being addressed, not only in the Philippines, but especially in countries like uh, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, the Confucian culture societies where they do have very heavy cognitive loads and uh, things that we do not recommend here, which means a lot of tutoring in, in before the pandemic, tutoring was a billion dollar industry in these countries and uh, which was being followed, by the way, by many of our schools before the pandemic in, in, in the Philippines, in the urban areas where um, parents spent a lot for tutors for their children after school. We do not recommend that because that um, exacerbates the cognitive load, makes it even heavier. And then in our DLP, we from the beginning, from 2002, we have the zero homework policy. Absolutely no homework at home, precisely because we are addressing burnout issues and heavy cognitive load issues. So in our DLP, the teachers do not do a lot of lecturing. What takes the time of the teacher? The teacher still plays a very important role, but it is not the active classroom discussion style. But the teacher now monitors the progress of learning of the students because sometimes to, it's, it's not easy to meet the expectations of the deaf ed. Many of you here are from the Department of Education and I understand uh, that the curriculum, the prescribed competencies, it's not easy to meet them. But we always try because we would like to be good citizens. So we try to meet them and it's not very easy. So what we do is 
uh, for example, in our school, I'm speaking from personal experience as a principal and as a school directress. And right now in the pandemic, I'm 100% involved. I'm editing all the LAS in all grade levels, in all subjects from grade 7 to grade 12. So I have some feel. And uh, it's not easy to meet the competencies. And sometimes, there, at least now, for the first quarter, we're going quite slow. But this is a chance also for us to monitor how the learning of the students are going. And if completely necessary, we backtrack a little bit. But with experience, we know which topics in the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, we can integrate, we can skip, or if not skip, put them in other subjects and so on. You know, it's like the coach in basketball, you adjust. But we never, ever sacrifice the learning of our students. So it's, it's um, balancing the cognitive load, the prescribed competencies of the depth ed, what we can do, integrate, uh, have strategies, or whatever. Again, that's the long answer to your question. OK, thank you. We have a question here from Nanette uh, Repayo from Aklan State University. Um, her question was, how are concepts better learned when lectures and teacher interactions are limited? Uh, uh, as we have mentioned, it's the learning activity sheet which becomes the core. As we said before, if you design the idea learning activity sheet, teacher intervention can even, the need for teacher intervention can even go to zero. And an example of that is we have, and we have, we have done this many times, we have this learning activity sheet series for radioactivity, you know, alpha decay, beta decay, gamma decay, and then finding the parent and daughter nuclides, a series for the decay chain. Our students do that absolutely with no teacher intervention, and they are able to uh, answer the culminating activity. The, you, you see, you have this competency and you divide it into maybe 15 LAS. Very simple per LAS. They don't need any teacher intervention. And then you assess their learning with a culminating activity that uh, checks whether they learned all these different steps. And normally they do very well. So it's possible. So whether, by the way, whether it's elementary, high school, college, or even graduate school, as long as you have well-defined steps, well-defined terms, target-oriented towards the competency that you desire them to achieve, then teacher intervention, discussions, and even peer discussions become supplemental and not necessary. So the role of the teacher now is heavily on the assessment in the uh, looking at the LAS and the, so they don't lecture, lecture that much, but they will be do a lot of assessing. That's the role of the teacher. Okay. All right. So um, we have a follow-up question from Mr. Prudential Rubies. Um, he has uh, quite a number of questions here, but his internet is not very good right now. So I'm going to read his questions. Um, his concern is mostly on non-readers, his concern, because right now he is writing LAS for Math 7 and English 7 and uh, to help a uh, struggling leader. So uh, for his first question was if you have any sample, uh, uh, if you have tips or if you have um, web links that he can refer to in creating this LAS. And also... Um, most of the struggling grade seven learners have a reading level of grade four. Same with their numeracy skills. So how do we prepare LAS to suit their level? Shall we adjust it down to grade four to start with? Uh, well, instinctively, I would say yes. Uh, the Use the language. That would be simple enough. Um, uh, we have noticed really that many reference materials in the sciences, in mathematics, or even in English, the vocabulary used could be above the, the level of the students. Now remember, many of our books are based really on Western books, adapted from Western style books, or textbooks, or reference materials. 
that is because when we go to the College of Education or for, for college, the, the writers, they are influenced by these systems before. So, but this Western style book, especially if the basis would be American textbooks and reference materials, the assumption there, the precondition there is really that the students in the US have English as their mother language, their first language. And so when the textbooks that we have uh, are written with this influence in mind, you can expect that students whose mother language is Visayan or Bicol or Waray or uh, Ilocano or what will have difficulty with that language. So I would suggest definitely lower down the, the, the level of the vocabulary in the beginning. Because actually, if, this, if, if you observe how ch uh, students, young children learn, not only young, but even adults, um, the moment you are able to learn something fundamental and simple, but you learn it very well, you could be very slow in the beginning, but as you learn more, you speed up. So it's like in chess, you have the queen's gambit. You do a gambit. You lower down your level to grade four or even grade three, such that the child will now feel, oh, this is very easy. I can do this. It's just asking me to add. If you combine these two, if I combine two and two, which means I add two and two, I get four. It's very simple. And then they get the confidence to move on to the next. So that is your gambit. Even if they're grade seven students or grade eight students, lower their level first and then slowly pull them up as the school year goes on. And before you know it, at the end of the school year, their learning differential is already very Hi, uh, I, I, have, I have witnessed this personally. As I said, I'm a, a very hands-on type of person. So I can assure you, I remember, um, I'm sorry I, I talk so much, but I would like to share my experiences. I remember we had visitors in, uh, people started noticing what we were doing in Bohol in 2004, 2005. We implemented the DLP 2002. We went back to Bohol in 1999. So just a few years. So by 2005, we had visitors from different parts of the country. And it, was, uh, it should have been embarrassing, but I, I don't feel embarrassed easily. You know, they were telling me, uh, Dr. Bernido, your your, your, what your students in fourth year high school are doing in math, we do in second year high school. So that means we're really very much behind. But I told them, well, you see, I, I will not sacrifice solid learning and mastery for majority of our students just so I can say they are at par with other students. Uh, so because especially in mathematics, grade eight math is very, very, very important. You cannot sacrifice that just to say you can teach calculus by high school. No. Calculus demands serious preparation for functions. So for several years, our fourth year high school students were doing second year math. And I remember the first time I entered, in fact, I asked our fourth year high school students to do the multiplication table because I realized many of them could not multiply. So they did the multiplication table and then we banned calculators, no calculators. Not for math, not for physics, not for chemistry. And of course, they complained. But we told them, no, no calculators. We want you to be 100% comfortable with numbers. So again, let me just summarize my point. Uh, do not be afraid to go simple, go below the level so that you can build up the confidence of the students. Let them, well uh, let them learn the fundamentals well. And before you know it, they will speed up. And by the way, even when we had uh, fourth year students taking second year high school level math, we were already passing students for the University of the Philippines. Why? Strong fundamentals. So that's another long answer. <laughs> I hope Namdi, it's okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So we have a question from Ms. Lenny Nilius. Uh, she's asking if the LAS are already aligned with the MELPs of DepEd. 
for for this school year because we were aware that some deaf ed divisions were interested in making use of our learning activities then we have endeavored to align them very closely with the MEL. Before this school year, we had learning activities which were not completely aligned deliberately, but uh, we, we satisfied the deaf ed, you see, but we have some strategies for enhancing, for boosting, for strengthening. But this year, we have endeavored to really align them with the competencies of deaf ed so that public school teachers who would like to uh, use these activities can do so. For our uh, next question, I would like to call Ms. Lenny, uh, I'm sorry, Lynn Prelis, Pre Preles, I'm sorry. Can you um, unmute yourself, ma'am, and state your question directly? Uh, hello, po. Hello, Dr. Vicky and Sir Chris, Dr. Nungho. Um, my question is, if I remember it right, po, ano, under the dynamic learning program, you assign an expert teacher or master teacher to discuss the lesson and then make clarifications on the lesson given in the learning activity sheets of the learners. Uh, my question po is, under the new normal, how do you go about with this, especially that online lesson is not possible? And because also of the poor internet, internet connections, how does the master teacher or the expert teacher make some clarifications to the learners? Also, how, how is the content of the last you designed under the new normal be, can, can be compared with the, 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 the LAS you designed before? Ano po yung nadagdag or nabago? Well, the LAS... In the LAS... Merong... Okay. Uh, the, the LAS, uh, for in, uh, during the pandemic, the big difference, I think, is that it's now more aligned to the milk, uh, as mentioned by Marivik here. And then about the intervention, because the expert teacher cannot anymore lecture, the 20% intervention, teacher intervention. Well, uh, this school year, we have what we call the intervention LAS, okay? Uh, which means that, uh, suppose um, there was an, a quiz, and then, or um, a question in the LAS, then the students would return the LAS, and of course, uh, not everybody gets it correctly. This intervention LAS is an LAS which discusses step by step by step the solution of the question that was uh, posed uh, earlier. So that's one. We have an intervention LAS. Secondly, uh, we also make use of. Uh, 15 minute, 10 minute uh, radio, radio intervention for selected subjects and when, wherever it is needed. So that, that's one, maybe. Uh, yeah, for, for the radio, because, uh, well, in our school, only around 10 to 15 percent have access to internet. So really, that's why we have drop off stations weekly, they, they write the LAS. So intervention, if they, the teachers are very resourceful, actually, it could be by email, it could be by messenger, it could be using the learning platform, we have Turnitin, and then we also have, um, what else, text, because some do not have Facebook, and so on. So all venues, and also radio. For the radio, in the beginning, the teachers were wondering how we would do it, because they said, we need uh, visual aids. Uh, you know, you write on the board when you explain. Now, we are telling them the visual aid now will be the LAS itself. So even with the radio, you can tell your students, uh, have your LAS with you because we will discuss that particular LAS. So then uh, that can be done by radio. And then, of course, even for the students, there we have still a few students who do not have the radio or they are because we have students living in very remote barangays then we try to prepare this uh intervention las printed that their parents could collect and uh yeah so so that they could have supplemental but the the intervention LAS, supplemental LAS and so on Thank explanation you. LAS we also have review LAS 
especially for grade 7, remember, before they can go to grade 8, they should know multiplication, division, so addition, subtraction of signed numbers. They have to review that. So they review, review fractions. So review LAS, supplemental LAS, intervention LAS. Uh, you can be creative. Uh, drawing LES just so you 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 get the feel that they are learning and you're able to to connect with them. So there are actually many ways. But but all these types of LES have to be copied by hand. Yeah. By the students, that's the uh, non-negotiable. Yeah, especially uh, for those teachers who do who teach math and physics, chemistry. We absolutely insist on this. In fact, we put it in the intervention LES. They have to copy by hand every equation one at a time so that they will really be able to practice in their minds and visualize how to solve a physics problem, how to do a chemical uh, equation or formula, reaction, and so on. They have to do that uh, very detailed. So we hope we address your concern. Actually, teachers are very creative. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a question here from Jean uh, Laskete. Uh, how about the significant items considered in crafting the intervention of LAS for college learners? Have you considered that, sir? College learners? Well, actually, if we, we have senior high school, and senior high school is that used to be college level. I mean, in our generation, or in your most of you, the generation, that is equivalent to the first two years of college, so it would be basically the same. Which means, even in college, uh, I can give an example. In physics, you have kinematic equations. It's also taken up in college. You can have your learning activities, one kinematic equation, one activity, because at that level, they should have already taken up some topics earlier. And then intervention, again, would be a discussion step-by-step uh, -step solution of illustrative uh, or illustrative problems for english and writing uh, an example which could already be a, a college level performance task i think given a news report for example in creative nonfiction, you have a news report straight news article you can convert it to a creative nonfiction piece uh, with just some guidelines so the students can again just do the LAS performance task uh, with the guidelines, what is your theme, what's your storyline, your plot, the characterization, and so on, conflict, resolution, the usual parts. So it's a smooth transition. In fact, I also teach graduate school, Chris and myself, but I, I have taught graduate school at UP and also, but more so at the University of San Carlos in Cebu, I have also applied a, a version of the DLP uh, when I teach graduate school physics, so it can be done. The, the essence there is the step-by-step -step approach, writing, calculating, and not just listening or watching a, a teacher or a professor lecture and do the derivations by himself or by yourself. So that's the essence. You can do that for college. By the way, uh, at the college level, there's a, a group of universities uh, owned by FINMA. Uh, uh, FINMA, uh, there, there, there's one in Cagayan de Oro City, one in Iloilo, one in Cebu, and in Northern Luzon. And this uh, group of universities and colleges apply the CBIFDLP at the college level. That's great. Okay, so... um. The topic for this webinar session was the innovation in education. So perhaps to cap our um, Q&A for this session, we would just like to ask, because we had considered the DLP as a re revolutionary way or innovative way of teaching in uh, schools. So when you introduced the DLP um, at the start, was there some reactions from parents or teachers that you can tell us about? Oh yes, uh, there have been. There were very, very strong reactions. <laughs> well, actually, we introduced the DLP in two thousand two, and we introduced it two weeks before the start of classes. And when we introduced it, the parents complained, the teachers complained, the students complained, everybody complained. Um, but then, um, once we introduced the DLP, the first, uh, it was the students who first uh, uh, their complaints died down. And the second were the parents. Once the parents saw the portfolio uh, of the different subjects and they saw that uh, 
their uh, son or daughter can oh marunong pala magdrawing itong si junior ganyan ganyan hindi nila alam once they saw the because we distribute the class cards inside the classroom and inside the classroom on the chair of the student would be this pile of portfolios for different subjects so the parent can see all the accomplishments the daily accomplishments of the child so the complaints of the parents also died down and actually the last two die down would be the complaints of the teachers because there's a change of mindset between the traditional and the CVIF DLP. Um, you know, a lot of us go to teaching because we would like to, to teach inside the classroom. But in the CVIF DLP, we take seriously what they say that uh, rather than a, a sage on the stage, we are a guide on the side. And truly, uh, this, the, the whole system becomes learner-centered because uh, we have a parallel scheme where the uh, intervention of the teacher is, is limited. So um, it's the teachers who would uh, be the last to... So very, very strong objections indeed. <laughs> but again, once the students felt that they were learning much more, they became happier, so the complaints... Uh, died down that uh, in the early days we invoked our being scientists we told them uh, please trust us because all we want is that your children our students will learn as much as possible in all the different subjects in a way that would be measurable in the sense that they would be able to enter good universities good colleges and go on to successful professional lives but uh, w one thing I notice is that once once a school goes to CVF DLP fully, it becomes difficult to go back to traditional. If, if if it's the whole school doing it, it's hard to go into DLP, but it's also hard to get out of DLP once you have been doing it. For example, uh, Davao Christian High School implemented the CVF DLP in two thousand five, and uh, and they're very faithful about about it. And um, three years ago. Uh, they are now top 10 in the whole country based on the CEM, Center for Educational Measurement. Uh, it's a Chinese exam. school. It's a Chinese rich school. Chinese school in Davao, Davao Christian High School. And uh, they have been implementing for 15 years the CVIF DLP. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. So um, for, um, for, for the last question, because we have uh, one major lesson that we have learned during this pandemic is that Things can suddenly change at an instant, and um, so perhaps in this um, method that you have introduced to our school, is there um, a way for you to like um, how would you ensure that the DLP will be uh, responsive to the changing environment, and if it will really be uh, and it will be an answer or response to the needs of the learners? How would you ensure that at this point? Well, uh, I would like the Philippines, for example, to take the teams or the PISA even after the pandemic. Uh, the only way you can, what, what you cannot measure, you cannot improve. So we always have to have a performance indicator and one good performance indicator to see whether we're ensuring or improving is to take uh, uh, international exams and, and so on and so forth. That's the only way. That would be after the pandemic. Yeah. But actually, since the situation is really very new at this time, um, we are continuously monitoring. So, for example, I, I ask for, we ask for surveys from teachers who are really submitting the LAS. Um, the, the teachers are sending to me their e-class records. They email to me and, and we look at trends, whether students are really able to do the activities uh the exams how they are responding definitely it's not 100 uh, percent many students do very well but there would still be this percentage and so we try to address uh these issues it's a continuous monitoring we cannot relax at this time because everything's new so uh, what would be your uh, final words uh, for our teachers who are currently uh, creating LAS at this time, ma'am. Would you like, to, would you have something to say to them right now? Well, uh, the only thing I can say is try to go to our website and try to click the e-learning 
and look at the different LAS from grade seven to twelve uh, for all the all the subjects. I, I think that would be the best way of uh, assessing and learning from from the program. Uh, the website is as uh, it's just cvifbohol.com. You Google search. And, and by the way, we're not claiming that what we do, what we upload, is perfect or ideal. We also find it difficult to approach what we say is ideal. But we always try. We do make mistakes sometimes, but that's normal because the next step is to improve and and uh, enhance the next for for the next school year and so on. So don't worry too much. I mean, don't feel the pressure to immediately produce the perfect or the ideal learning activity sheet. That's not easy. Even I myself, sometimes I think I've done a very good learning activity sheet and then I give it to the students and then I realize it's not that good after all. So I do uh, remediation or supplemental or whatever. So to, to see what is in our mind, then you just check the website. Thank you. All right. And thank you for listening. Thank yeah. you. Thank you uh, to our speakers this afternoon, Dr. Christopher Bernido and Dr. Maria Victoria Bernido. That ends our Q&A for our first webinar session for this series. So at this point, we would like to request everybody here at, um, at the Google Meet to turn on their video for our last picture. So may we request everybody now to open their video cameras. All right, so all smiles now. So one, two, and three. Let's have one more. One, two, and three. All right, thank you very much to our dear participants and to our resource speakers. We would like now to remind our participants to um, accomplish the feedback form that will be flashed on the screen and will be typed in at the chat box by our chat box monitors. The next session of this uh, webinar series will be on December 11, uh, 2020, at uh, 2 o'clock to, to, to 4 p.m. Uh, this is webinar session two entitled Innovation Thinking in School Transformation, Incorporating Innovation in School Programs and Projects. So kindly await uh, further details about this webinar session to your respective email addresses at least a day before the event. So again, please don't forget to accomplish the feedback form after you leave the platform. Your feedback will be valuable to us in the delivery of the And we will also be using this to validate your attendance. It was a pleasure hosting you this afternoon and a privilege. We look forward to meeting you all in our next webinar session. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mom Miriam. Thank you. Uh, Mom Miriam, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, are we receiving any certificates from here, ma'am? Uh, after the webinar. Yes, because I have been into webinar this webinar for from that for quite several times, yet I did not receive any certificate yet. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for... Ms. Miriam, Ms. Miriam, can you flash again the the uh, evaluation, please? Thank you. Um, I'm very able to take it.
Thank you. 